Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, my name's Megan. I'm the Mood Read Queen, and you've happened upon, or maybe purposefully <laughs> chosen, um, to watch my very first reading vlog video. Yes. I was talking to a friend earlier today, and going through like the list of video ideas that I had, and I have to read this book. Um, well, I don't have to. It's not like life or death. But there's a book I want to read that we're going to talk about. And she's like, what if you just did a reading vlog? Like, because I'm going to be reading it very, very quickly. So I'm going to. So the book that I'm going to be reading is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. And first of all, if you are a fantasy fan, YA or otherwise, what are you doing? You got to get on the Margaret Rogerson Rogerson train because I love her. I, um, she's published three books now. This is her third book. It is the first in a series. However, she is one of the only, at least in my knowledge, one of the only fantasy authors I've read who does a, has a, does a really good job with one-offs. And you don't see that very often, you know, like, I love fantasy books, but I also appreciate when the stories that are being told are able to be told in a more succinct manner, that the world building is still uh, present, that the characters are still developed, you know, because we don't complain like in like realistic, you know, like rom-coms or you know, maybe, um, I don't know, like there are a lot of books that it's pretty normal to just have one book, you know, um, and the series might instead kind of come out of this idea of connected characters, but a different storyline. But in fantasy, I, it bugs me sometimes that it seems like the default is series. And I realize that there are big stories to tell, um, like this is part of a series, but also, I want to read stories that aren't that big, like that I'm still able to connect with the characters, that I'm still able to enjoy the story, but I didn't have to read 1,500 pages to get there. And those books are great too, you know? So anyway, she has a couple different books. I'll put this down for a minute and then we'll talk about this. So she has two other books. The first one is called and I'll just probably stick it somewhere over here. So the first one is called uh, An Enchantment of Ravens. And I read this one first. Um, I know some people discovered her because of her second book and then kind of went backward. Um, th that book, Enchantment of Ravens, is a good book. I gave it four stars when I read it first. I have not reread it. Um, it is a bit small, even for a standalone fantasy. Um, I felt that... Like there were great characters, the world building was was pretty well done, but I still had some questions at the end. And there were definitely moments that I felt like I was struggling to keep up a little bit. But but the basis was there. So when her second book, Sorcery of Thorns, came out, I hopped on that, I read it. I have recommended that book to I cannot tell you how many of my students and other people who aren't my students and everyone loves it. It is incredibly well done. Um, and she's actually <sighs> coming out with a novella in the spring, I think. Um, that is a kind of novella sequel. And I think that sort of kind of came out of the pandemic. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy about it. So if you read that now, you know, you'll be ready for it. But Sorcery of Thorns is uh, a almost flawless book in my opinion the first 150 pages or so there's a lot of world building and it does move maybe a little bit slowly but it, I think it, the plot necessitates that because you really need to be sure of the world that you're in before you just start flying and that's what the second half of the book is. It's just like, all right, let's go. Like, we don't have time to explain this. You just have to stick with me. And it's just so well done. And one of my all-time favorite characters ever is in this book. And the cast of characters is just fantastic. So Sorcery of Thorns is fantastic. But I will say, if you like fantasy, I definitely check out her first book first. 
it might be harder to go backward just because of her development as an author, if that makes sense. I know sometimes it can be, you feel like you're kind of backpedaling um, and you saw them already progress. So anyway, that's my background on Margaret Rogerson. She's amazing. Um, I just, I love her books. And so when she came out with Vespertine in October, um, I knew it was coming out before. Um, I knew that it was going to be part of a series. And I was like, Margaret, what did we say about series? But, but. I'm excited about it. So my um, former student teacher, um, I had a student teacher in the in the spring this year. I never had one before. So um, she survived the experience, thank God. Um, she and I um, both love Sorcery of Thorns. I actually, it was the first book I suggested to her and she read it and she loved it. And she gave it five stars. And then I kept asking her to read other books and they weren't as good. <laughs> And I was like, she's like, it's your fault because you gave me the best one first. And she wasn't wrong. But um, we, um, she's not going to be in the area because um, she's going to be um, teaching abroad the, for the next year. And so um, we won't be seeing each other in person. And she lives about four hours away from me right now. And so tomorrow I am going to drive there to see her one last time and we both love this author and I thought let's both read this book before we get there so we can talk about it except friends that um I've been reading a bunch of other books <laughs> because um I've been participating in the life on the edge bingo challenge that talk about spoon uh, Amanda about uh, talk about swing on um, Instagram has been doing and it's been really fun and um, I've been very I've been trying to stick to my TBR but what I did stupid stupid girl what I did was fall in love with a book that's part of a three book series and a novella and they're all published and I finished it yesterday and then I knew that I couldn't start the second one because I had to read this. And I do want to read this. Um, it's not officially on my Life on the Edge, like August TBR, but I, I, I don't know why I didn't put it on there because I knew I was going to read it. So anyway, I read six pages last night. And um, then I had a horrible headache. And then I was up until 5 a.m. So anyway, I'm a, I'm a teacher on a break. So just, you know... Maybe you have teacher friends or, you know, you have teachers because you are younger, in which case, sorry that I dropped some language in these videos, but I'm not, I'm not sorry, not sorry. Um, but um, <laughs> it's crazy to me that I, like, I mean, I don't want to like toot my own horn here or anything, but I think I'm pretty great sometimes. Um, but I'm also a disaster like a mess in the summertime. Oh no, she doesn't know what's up. Okay. And so my sleep schedule, the last two weeks of summer, two, three weeks of summer is always a mess. I like, I managed to keep it like pretty normal. And then like the last two, three weeks, I just fall off the wagon, like so hard. And it's like 3 a.m. And you know, anyway, so it was 5 a.m. Like this morning. And I, cu I couldn't fall asleep all night, but I couldn't read. Like I have, I have this book in three different formats, people. Okay. I bought this because I love her and I wanted to be supportive. Okay. Then I have the ebook because it's on Kindle Unlimited, kids. It's on Kindle Unlimited. So I was like, I'll just get it on, you know, the Kindle too. Okay. And then I was like, you're not going to be able to finish this sucker before you have to get on the road tomorrow at 8 a.m. because we're meeting for lunch. So then I had a credit on my Audible because I wasn't going to be able to get it from the library in time. So I've got it on the phone. Okay. So this is what I did. This is what you're going on this journey with me. Okay. We're going to, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's going to be fun. So I, so I read six pages. Okay. And then last night I couldn't read and it was a mess, okay? So, and then today when I could have read, do you know what I did? I didn't. No, of course not. Why would you do something that you need to do? 
So I opened this book. I was uh, very careful to avoid spoilers. I will tell you what this book is about here in a minute. I probably should have already done that. Okay. But you know, first time for everything. And I looked at the audiobook and I looked at each chapter starting from the end of the book and did the math to figure out how many chapters I would need to read. Um, that I would be able to read on the drive tomorrow. So that way I can finish it before I see her. Um, so I can get through 11. So, and the numbers were slightly different. I don't like how some books do that. Like don't put chapter one and then have it be literally just the dedication. Like what the, <laughs> excuse you, excuse you, that's not a chapter. Anyway. Um, so the numbers were slightly different, but the last 11 chapters, I think I can get to in the car tomorrow. And so I counted back from the end of this book and now I can't remember <laughs> where I was. I think it was like, oh okay, yeah, uh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I have to get to. I think my goal is to get to the first 20 chapters, um, which is 270 pages, kids. So anyway, that's the goal. And I will have time. I, I'm getting up tomorrow at 630 because I have to get ready to go. So I'll be, be able to listen to hopefully like an hour-ish um, tomorrow morning. But I'm going to try to read some tonight. I am recording this at 1022 p.m. And yeah, okay, so you're gonna go on this journey with me. And I think what I'm gonna try to do is like every hour that I'm in the car, I will record like a, like on my, this might be a disaster, okay? But I'm gonna try to record, I've got like a thing in my car that I can, that holds my phone. And so I think I'm gonna try to record um, like my thoughts, like, once an hour as I'm listening to it. Um, and then maybe tomorrow morning while I'm letting my hair dry or something, I'll decide that I don't care what I look like and I will record my thoughts from um, what I've read so far. I'm gonna try to use my phone, so we'll see how it works out like formatting wise. I've never done that before where I've had I've used my phone and my, my lovely <laughs> school issue Chromebook. So, and then I'll probably have like final thoughts when I get back from the trip, I'll record like my final, what did I think of it? And also I might talk to, um, Emily about it and see if she wants to, um, like maybe while we're in the car tomorrow, um, record our conversation about it. So we'll see about it. I don't know. I don't know, but that's it. Okay. So what's Vespertine about? <laughs> I'm just going to read the inside to you. Okay. <clears throat> also, it looks like um, there's a good amount of uh, French stuff going on here. So I um, took two semesters of French in college, and that was only because I didn't want to take any more Spanish. Because um, I had taken five years in high school, and I wasn't very good at it. And it turns out I should have just kept taking Spanish, because French is not my vibe. Okay. But anyway, so we're just going to try so it says, the dead of Lore do not rest, because I think that word is French. Artemisia is training to be a gray sister, a nun who cleanses the bodies of the deceased so that their souls can pass on. Otherwise, they will rise as spirits with a ravenous hunger for the living. She would rather deal with the dead than the living, who trade whispers about her scarred hands and troubled past. When her convent is attacked by possessed soldiers, Artemisia, I think that's how you say her name, defends it by awakening an ancient spirit bound to a saint's relic. It is a revenant. Not like that Leonardo DiCaprio shit. <laughs> I never saw that movie. I don't care. Sorry, Leo. Um, a malevol malevolent being that threatens to possess her the moment she drops her guard. Wielding its extraordinary power almost consumes her, but death has come to L'Oreal. Loray, and only a Vespertine, a priestess trained to wield a high relic, has any chance of stopping it. With all knowledge of Vespertine's lost to time, Artemisia turns to the last remaining expert for help, the Revenant itself. As she unravels a sinister mystery of saints, secrets, and dark magic, her bond with the Revenant grows. 
And when a hidden evil begins to surface, she discovers that facing this enemy might require her to betray everything she has been taught to believe if the Revenant doesn't betray her first. And I just like to point out that on the back, one of the quotes <clears throat> says, An enthralling adventure, replete, with spellbinding characters, a slow-burning love story, and a world worth staying lost in. Okay, so listen. It's the first in a series. We're clearly not going to solve the this man is a ghost spirit thing, okay, in this book. But Margaret, if I read, if this is a trilogy, and by the end of this man does not have like a corporal, corporal, whatever. Is it corporal? Corporeal? If he doesn't have a physical body that he can live in and shit, I'm not about that. Okay. Okay. Or maybe she did and she is spirit too. I don't care how we do it, but it needs to make sense because guys, if you read her first book, Margaret, you're a genius. I love you. But the first book at the end, it may feature, um, a human woman being crowned, say queen of the like elves or something. Maybe they're fae. I don't remember. Okay. And like maybe a prince of the fae slash elves. Again, don't remember. And we don't, that I recall, resolve the, is she going to live forever? Or is she like going to die like a human problem? So, so this better not have the same problem. Better not have the same problem. So anyway. That's what I'm going to read. It's already 16 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I'll update you later. Okay, folks. I'm going to try really hard to stare at the camera and not look like what I don't know. I'm using my phone. So I am, let's see here, 68 pages into Vespertine. And, you know, you have moments where, like, you think you, you like, read pretty quickly and then you realize that you, like, don't. So that's where we're at right now. Um, so couple, couple things. I, man, I hate this about myself a little bit, but guys, I'm a romantic. I'm a romantic. And, um, so immediately upon reading any book, I'm like scouting. I'm like scouting. Um, cause it doesn't have to be like the whole point of the story and maybe it doesn't even have to come to fruition, but I look for stuff. So in this book, we have two candidates, okay? So the first one is this, like, she goes out of her way to point out the fact that there is a fairly handsome, if sort of asshole uh, blonde priest who's probably, like, around 20 years old. And he's the one who comes in and basically, like, um, Artemisia is, like, um, in training, and so these girls who are staying at this like nunnery convent, there we go. That's the word I want. Um, they can like, they have to take this test and then they'll be able to figure out what their jobs will be within this order because they've all, they've already all been tested and know that they have the sight, which means that they can work with the dead, like the spirits of the dead, but it's like to what level they can work with them or, you know, or will they just kind of be like the low level, like nuns or whatever. So anyway, um, Artemisia already knows that she probably has the ability to do like the really difficult stuff. She can sense relics and things like that. Um, but she doesn't like to talk to people. She was possessed when she was a child and she has the scars on her hands from that. And she doesn't want, like, she thinks that she probably has those abilities. And even though she like lies to the, like the higher up nuns and like the mother, like they know, like she knows that they know that she isn't like, like everybody else. But she just wants to do the job that she already does because she's comfortable with that and she doesn't want to have to interact with people and have like this job that is like incredibly important but is also like in the public eye basically so anyway 
this priest comes to do um, like to test everybody and the test like goes really quickly and she's like freaked out because it's he's like not taking a lot of time with all these other girls and so when it gets her to her turn she's trying to lie to him but it doesn't work and so anyway um i can't remember his name right now because i've only met him like twice but um you know give me a nice asshole character who is age appropriate for our mc and um i'm probably gonna do something with that so we'll, we'll see about that um, we also have the possession already happening. Well, I don't even call it possession. So there's, in this book, you have like different levels of spirits. I will call them that. And, um, based on how they died. And they are like these fifth order spirits who basically, there's seven of them that have been, um, they're, they're basically bound to like a reliquary and could be like a bone or something. Um, and they're used as weapons um, because they're stronger than any other um, force. And there's an attack. And due to circumstances, I will try not to do a ton of like spoilers in this, but um, it, this is already in like in the information that's in the on the book. Um, but but the, um, Artemisia has to has to like take on um the revenant that is inside of this reliquary and i'm it should be interesting to see what happens um because like if if normally after it's used it gets put forced back into the reliquary but that hasn't happened yet and um also there's some sort of like big spirit thing happening where um, people are fleeing their homes and people are dying and then you send more soldiers but then the soldiers die so there's more spirits and nothing like this has happened and like maybe ever and so um, we're just getting out that maybe she might be able to help but she still has like the revenant like inside of her still so I'm interested to see what's going to happen with this. It is, I think it's supposed to be a trilogy, but maybe just a duology. I need to actually look into it. Um, I am not sure how far I'm going to get tonight. Like, I don't know. I had, I had plans, but I'm going to read for another hour, 15 minutes or so and see how far we get. But I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, it's really good so far. I, one thing I really like about Margaret Rogerson, which I think I said in the clip earlier, um, she does a really good job of world building quickly. And I know I said that in An Enchantment of Ravens, um, she, how to, how to explain, she um, does take a lot of time at the beginning, which felt a little bit slow, but at the same time, like she knows how to do things quickly enough where like you can just like jump right into the action so like and then you end up finding out more about the characters as you go so ins instead of being bored at the beginning you know so she just does a really good job with that and so like with this book like she's doing that and i'm already like oh let's go like what's are, are we just gonna call him the revenant Do is he got a good name he's probably not even a dude but in my head he is a dude i mean of course he's a dude but i mean it, it wouldn't matter anyway but um, but I'm also, like, trying to plan, like, maybe, like, maybe they don't have a thing. But I'm pretty sure they've got a thing. Or maybe the slow burn romance is between her and the priest or whatever. I'm into it. Whatever happens. Maybe the Revenant gets to take over the body of the priest. And the, uh, whatever. We'll see how it goes. But I'm excited. So hopefully I try to make eye contact with the camera. I don't know. This is an experiment. First reading vlog. If I'm weirdly staring somewhere else, okay, sorry, but I'll update more tomorrow morning. All right, bye. Okay, <clears throat> update, friends. So <laughs> it is like almost 2 a.m. I'm not really tired, but that's just because my sleep schedule, like I mentioned earlier, is um really uh, messed up. 
So I have more theories, okay? I have more theories as I keep reading. I'm on page 145, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to finish this in time. Pretty, pretty darn sure. Like, I think I would have to read, like, 75 more pages. Like, maybe more than that. Um before I get in the car tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, but the fascinating things are afoot. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I can't decide if our, if our handsome asshole, blonde haired priest guy is a bad guy or a good guy. And the reason why is because she spends entirely too much time describing what he looks like and how he's being affected by things. And so I'm not going to like get into like the whole plot or anything right now because it's 2 a.m. But basically, like, he's a confessor, I guess. And everybody, like most people, okay, not most people, like the nuns who were higher up and um, like priests and confessors and all these people, they have relics, sometimes more than one. And so he wears one that like basically gets, there's different powers that are, that are like, um, related to that. Sorry, again, 2am. So brain's a little, blah, blah, blah. so, but every time she talks about him, she talks about how unwell he looks. And also there's a scene where they thought that she died and that, you know, she tumbled over like this cliff into like this water and um, he had like almost like a horrified reaction when no one else was looking. So I'm kind of wondering, I don't know, maybe I like to see the good in people, you know, and also I've also, I think I've let go of this whole, like the whole revenant is going to be like a romantic thing because we just had this discussion. They, by the way, the revenant fucking hilarious like sarcastic excellent I could find lines that I can I'm not gonna pull right now because I don't remember where they are but I mean the the, the conversations they have in her own head well he's in her head they it is in her her head and then she says things out loud um but like it's just really funny like it disappeared for a while and she finally was trying to find a way to like shock it back up so she could have a conversation with it. And it was like, like, I need privacy too, you know? Like, this isn't super interesting being in your head. And then it insults like nuns and it's pretty funny. So I'm thinking that it's going to be more like, she talks about like perceiving it as like a person and she was worried that in her like escape that she had like injured like or broken the relic and that if the relic breaks, then you know, then the Revenant, like, dies, basically. So it's way more complicated than that. But, um, yeah, it's really interesting. And I'm like, also, we just met this sweet soldier named Charles. And there's also, and I'm like, hmm, I don't know. So we'll see. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, oh, the guy's name is Leander, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what's that, what that's about, okay? But, like, I, yeah. Also, I don't trust, there's this, she's called the Divine, I think. And I don't trust her. And, um, there's also this old magic, which you're not supposed to use. And they're trying to figure out who's using the old magic. And... But I think someone's using it for a good reason, but maybe that's just me. And I was, like, thinking maybe that, like, Leander, the priest guy, wants to, like, knew that she was powerful, knew that Artemisia was powerful, and knew that he was going to need her help. Okay, I, I know I'm trying to make something out of nothing, maybe. But also, it just feels like... It just feels like something. So anyway, I'm going to read... Like, I don't know. I need to do, like, stretches and, like, I have PT stuff that I do um, at night a lot. 
because I, <laughs> TMI, but I had back surgery four years ago almost. It's not too much information, but like, I don't need to explain that in a video, at least not right now. So I try to do like, especially if I haven't been particularly active uh, in a day, I usually get my yoga mat out and do some like some stretches and some different like exercises um, before I go to sleep. So that way I don't wake up in pain because um, I can already tell that I haven't done it in a couple days and it hurts. So I'm going to read, I think, one more chapter so I can officially say that I have passed the 150 page mark and then I'm going to try out the audiobook while I'm doing my PT exercises and then I'm going to brush my teeth and then I'm going to swap this guy out for my ebook so I could lay in the dark on my ice pack like an 85 year old woman and um that's what we're up to children and I'm trying to figure out how long I need to get ready in the morning um because 6.30 does not seem like a good plan. I don't need an hour and a half. Maybe an hour. I can do an hour, maybe. Because, like, I don't care anymore about looking nice, you know? I just don't care anymore. So, anyway, I really like it. I'm telling you, she just, like, sweeps you up in it. And, like, look. Look. I mean, I'm, like, I'm about a third. Like, maybe a little bit more than a third. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. But still, I mean, ugh, evidence would suggest that I'm not a very fast reader, which is not that important. And I tell my kids it all the time. Because um, speed is not everything. But sometimes it like it's like glaring in the face. And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I'm not super great. But whatever. I've read at least 10 chapters so far. They're long chapters, too. So anyway... More updates. I said I was going to post again, like post again, <laughs> update again in the morning, but technically it is the morning now. So we'll see. I might do another update um, before I leave tomorrow. And then I'm going to have to figure out how the hell to like mount this sideways in my car. Otherwise, some of the clips are probably going to be like vertical. So sorry about that. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to probably be up till 3 a.m. <laughs> it's a great life. It's a great life. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm, uh, <laughs> I definitely didn't get left on time, <clears throat> which is not shocking. Um, because, of course, I wasn't tired. And then when I fell asleep, I was like the dead. So I have, I don't know how many hours left on this audiobook. Um, it's probably like four and a half or something. So I'm not going to finish it by the time I get there. Ugh, my fault. Um, but I am like, what I find interesting about, again, because I've never done these, um, like I had done a vlog before, is like narrating what my, what my head is doing because I normally I don't do that, right? You're just like, you're chilling out with your own brain while you're reading a book. And then, then you talk about it afterwards, you know, or maybe you talk about it to someone else while you're reading, but it's not like a play by play. So anyway, I thought I'd get, do my best to explain what I think is going on here. And, uh, I don't know, I'm assuming like reading vlogs are more spoilery. So I guess spoilers beware. Um, so, um, this confessor priest guy, Leander, I don't know what we're doing with him, um, because he might be evil, he might be using old magic, and he looks like shit, like, she talked, but, but also, but also, she spends too much time describing him for him not to be important, but at the same time, well, obviously he's important. If you've read Shadow and Bone, I did a whole rant on this in one of my videos. I'll probably try to link it or something. But um, the one of my biggest pet peeves about the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo is that um, what's his face, the hot dude, Kyle Ren vibes. 
Good God, what's his name? The Darkling, okay? He was, like, legit the only interesting person in that entire... Well, besides Nikolai, maybe. The only interesting person in that entire series. Because, uh, you know, uh, Alina and Mal were, like, the most fucking boring protagonists I've literally ever spent time with. Um, and that's saying something. So, anyway... God, they're both so horrible. But... I was, I was miffed because there were some interesting things that could have happened there. Like maybe slow, like a slow burn, like redemption arc or something. But instead they were like, nah, he's just evil. But that was the only comparison I could make because like we spent quite a bit of time with like her, with Alina in that book, like, uh, like describing him and stuff. And so that's probably why I was like fooled. Uh, but I still think he should have got a redemption arc and that's just not because I have a soft spot for like morally gray characters who wear a lot of black and are like tortured souls and shit. So this Leander guy, I don't know. Like he just has this vibe about him. Like they talk about him maybe wanting power and he's like using old magic and, um, you know, like maybe he's a baddie, like, but at the same time. I don't know, because this back of that book said the word slow burn romance, which again, I know when I started the channel, I was like, it's not a romance channel. And it's not. At the same time, I like a good romance element, okay, to the books I'm reading. Because it's nice, you know. So I don't know, because now I'm spending the entire book being like, I mean, I'm putting two and two together, obviously. But also, I'm like, is this the guy? Is this the guy? And like, I assume that it's a dude, right? It could be anybody, I guess. Um... But, um, I don't know. I'm just, they keep trying to tell me Leander is evil, but at the same time, mm, but also they might have hinted that he killed his brother because if you feel like an immense amount of guilt, it helps you, um, basically like better able to like control your relic or whatever. And his is like truth telling and all that shit. I don't know. There's all sorts of, all sorts of, stuff, all sorts of stuff that's related to it. But also, I think I have sensed, like, I don't know who the, who the first couple might be. I mean, it might be Leander and Artemisia, or it might be um, this sweet knight named, or not knight, um, soldier. Well, he, he probably looks like a knight. Because, um, like, this is, like, you know, one of those, like, fantasy, you know, historical, we got relics and, like, you know. It is interesting. There's no monarch. The, it's just... Um, like the clergy or whatever. It's one of those where like the clergy or like the magic is, um, not ma I guess, I guess we can call it magic, although they don't use those words. It's closely associated with religion, which I think is interesting. Um, but, um, there's this guy named Charles and he's like hella sweet and very cute. And one of his really good friends named Jean, who's like this giant of a man, and they're all really young, too. Of course they're all really young, because heaven forbid we tell a story about 25-year-olds, but it's okay. I'm just pretending. Um, and so um, he was he was possessed during this battle where Artemisia came with the Revenant. Um, the Revenant is, like, the real MVP here, honestly. Like, fantastic. Um, but, like, there were soldiers fighting, and then they were losing, and then, you know, the force of Artemisia with... Um, the Revenant, um, just helped destroy all these, um, spirits that were fighting and possessing these dead soldiers and stuff. And so, um, Gene got accidentally, um, possessed. And so now he's like, he hasn't spoken since, and he seems afraid of himself. He like hurt a lot of people on accident. And so he's like chilling at the convent, which has like these like non-extradition rules or whatever. It's not the right word, but basically... Um, and so that is where Artemisia is right now. But, like, Charles keeps coming to visit him and to, like, see if he's okay. Um, and it's just, like, it's cute. And, uh, Marguerite, who is this girl that, um, uh, Artemisia roomed with for, like, seven years, um, she, at the convent, she, um, shows up because she ran away and I was like is this Marguerite? It's Marguerite. And they haven't gotten along but Artemisia is realizing she sort of underestimated her and also when when Marguerite thinks that Artemisia needs help because like there's a, there's. A, I'm not going to try to get like I don't want to 
spoil everything. But she, her first, her first instinct is to go find Jean, and I was like, oh my god, I ship it so hard already. So obviously, like maybe towards the end of the book, we'll get like. I mean, I would hope that we get the inklings of some sort of, like, the romantic element. Um, it's interesting enough in itself right now. Um, but, um, I definitely, I'm calling the Marguerite Jean thing. I'm calling it. I also call that they get together before, <laughs> like, the main couple. Um, also I'm sensing, um, a sort of, um, merry band of misfits vibe about to happen in this book because we have Artemisia and then the Revenant and they're like not separate but they are separate like they're both in her body but they have conversations and Marguerite knows and um she's not going to tell anybody um and then you've got Charles um who I think has an inkling about what's going on maybe I, mean, I don't think he's stupid but um he doesn't know who Artemisia is but at the same time I yeah I think we'll see and then there's Jean and Marguerite and I'm like, wait a second, is this like a little merry band of my peeps? So anyway, this is going to be a ridiculous vlog. Um, except, I mean, it's probably going to clock in like an hour or some shit. Like, good God. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. And um, I'm going to keep listening to this and try to pass this motorcycle here in front of me that his back of his shirt says disciple. And I'm like, okay, well. Whatever. Can you be a disciple of speed? Because <laughs> I hate passing people on these, like, like the one lane roads to hell, you know? Like, I hate that shit. It's, it's like, you know, I don't want, but I just want to speed like a demon because I got places to be and I left late and I'd like to, you know, make up some lost time, which I know is like not necessarily feasible, but I want to do it anyway. So anyway, alrighty, uh, more later. Toodaloo. Hello, everybody. So, <laughs> I finished Vespertine last night. I think it was still nighttime when I finished it. It was like, I was maybe like an hour and 15 minutes outside of Wichita, which is where I road tripped yesterday. And I finished it. And um, I didn't get to record, maybe another time, I didn't get to record any conversations that Emily and I had because... We were, we ate sushi yesterday and that's when we were talking about Vespertine. Um, so I, it didn't really make any sense to do it, to do it in there. Uh, but it was so funny cause she was like, we were talking about where we were at, like making sure we weren't going to spoil each other cause she didn't finish it either, which I was like, thank God I wasn't the only one, you know? Um, and, um, she said, she's like, I think I'm like five pages like away from where you're at, but Emily, I know you're watching this. <laughs> we're going to talk about it tomorrow night. Um, we're we're going to phone call and discuss the, the ending when she finishes it too. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, she was like actually about a chapter, a little bit more than a chapter ahead of me. But anyway, I finished it. And I don't, I was going through and watching some of the clips because I was um, earlier today, oh, I had all this horrible training stuff that I had to do. Um, for my like second side job gig thing where I teach online. And so, um, it is not my favorite. And if you've ever had to undergo training, like in education, this is a, a like a, something that happens. What is happening with this? Okay. Anyway, um, in education, this happens all the time. And I don't know if it happens in other, um, sectors. It probably does, but you know, it's pretty common to get, uh, training, training for things that you like 100% know how to do probably better than the person teaching you, but you just have to like just suck it up. So it, it is what it is, you know, but, um, it was fine. I, but I just, so I was in the, in between times, um, just trying to do what I could editing wise. Um, so anyway, this, <laughs> this video is probably gonna be like an hour long. So whatever. I mean, I guess I could edit myself, but I said some interesting stuff. Like, I mean, I thought it, there were some, there were some moments that I thought were humorous. If you haven't laughed so far, I'm so sorry. Cause I would like to think that I'm funny sometimes, but anyway. So, um, one thing that I was glad in watching the clips is that I didn't give away a ton. Like, I don't think I gave away a lot. So I think this end clip 
is going to be more like teasers um, in case you decide you want to read this book, which I suggest that you do. And then, um, and also just my general like thoughts, opinions, that kind of a thing. So on the last clip, I think I left off talking about some um, predictions. And I got to say, <laughs> your girl isn't wrong very often. Okay. Okay. That's not, that's not true. I'm wrong all the time, but um, I, I thought I was catching some vibes. Okay. And I was catching some vibes, but I have to say also, I don't have the actual book in this room with me right now. I just have the, um, back and you know what it says on the back of this book? Praise for sorcery of thorns, <laughs> not vespertine. So the slow burn romance thing that I was like, Ooh, where is it at? Nowhere. Okay. But at the same time, at the same time, at the end, there's like maybe like a little nugget, like a little like breadcrumbs of some stuff that might perhaps happen down the road. Um, so it's okay. It's okay. But I definitely should learn how to read because it clearly says like, you probably can't see it because there's light coming in from over there and it's whatever. Um, but yeah, it says praise for a sorcery of thorns. So I'm, I apparently, uh, just, I can't read. So anyway, um, so yeah, there's a little something, but like nothing at the same time, but at the same time, that's okay. So just FYI, go one with, uh, decent expectations. Um, the, uh, um, there are some great twists, uh, in the story. Um, I wasn't sure where we were going to end cause I knew it was going to be like the first book, but, um, Emily, my former student teacher who is reading this book with me, um, she's the one who's moving to South Korea. Um, she looked it up while we were eating yesterday and she was like, there was an interview or an answer from Margaret Rogerson on her Tumblr where she was like, yeah, I'm not even sure if it's going to be a duology or a trilogy. I'm just calling it a series. So I don't think, I mean, maybe she knows now, but I, I have, don't see any evidence of that. So it's going to be at least two books. And this definitely has like the beginning of a series vibes. Um, like it ends in a way that's like, we've solved a problem for now. There will probably be more problems later, but we'll probably be peaceful for a bit. Um, and it, I think it works. It's good. It's good. And, um, and I think the characters are also, they're all young. I mean, like, and it's not stupid, obvious that they're young, but I mean, it is a YA book. And at the same time, I do think that if a YA book is done well, it can apply to everybody. Fantasy is probably the easiest to do that with, but I really believe that. Um, and this book is just a perfect example of that. Um, but yeah, the characters do have some like growing up to do, but we all, <laughs> we all do. Okay. Because if I had done the growing up, I would no longer be filming on this uh, couch with these bookshelves behind me. And instead we would be in my library. So you could like see what that looks like but we're not in there yet. So, you know, <clears throat> anyway, it is what it is. Um, so yeah. Um, well, what was I going to say? What else? What else? Um, the humor in this book is great. Um, the Revenant top notch, uh, real MVP. It is, and it, it is it by the way, like just because the Revenant talks about another Revenant, that has a name. They, they all have names, but they don't give themselves those names. They hadn't. Um, Sereth, Serethriel? Serethriel. I'm messing up. Emily is watching this and she's saying, you just fucked it up. Serethriel. That's it. I don't have the book in front of me right now. So, um, anyway, um, the Revenant, um, Artemisia's Re uh, Revenant, um, calls it it. So there it's, <laughs> um, fascinating stuff. Uh, I think that's, I think we'll find out in the coming books. I've got some ideas. Okay. So like there's, there's this whole idea of she has befriended her revenant. Um, and her friend now new friend who used to be kind of like, we weren't sure what we were to each other. Margaret, Marguerite, who was a, her roommate for seven years, 
she has a shade that she has befriended that she just kind of lets hang out. Um, and Vespertine is starting to realize, and this is not like a huge spoiler thing. I think you see it happening very early on in the book that maybe these spirits, these, um, I don't know what we're calling them. I think they use the word spirits, but they're whatever we're calling it. Like anything that can be like, that can inhabit like a relic or um, like rings or pendants and that sort of a thing that then can be used um, like their consciousnesses intermingling with yours. Um, you can either like use them and put them away and, and train not to hear them and that's kind of like the right way to do it but the people who seem to be at the most peace with their magic are the people who have like a friendly connection with that entity and so i think we're going to see some interesting stuff happen with like the future of magic um like old magic uh where like the basis of that in the in their world and um how that will come to pass um but i think we have like there's definitely a hint at like a more stuff that could come down the pipeline like yeah we've we've kind of um temporarily solved the problem but at the same time like it's likely that more things will happen um leander has some moments okay I need to look for fan art for Leander, seriously. Um, he's blonde, which normally is not my type, but I mean, I say that. I don't know if I have a type, except if they're like the dark broody, whatever. But he's like blonde and broody. Um, and he's got some like good moments. I think he'll, I'd like to see him get more screen time. Like, I don't know if a future book might have like a different perspective thing. I don't know. Or maybe he'll just, I think they're going to skip time in between books is what I think is going to happen because um, she's going to get some training and he's going off somewhere, but she has this feeling that he'll be back and he probably will be back. I mean, um, hello. Because also Charles is not it. Charles is not it. The really sweet, like, um, soldier guy. He is too, like, peppy and adorable and, um... I don't want to cast him as like the gay BFF stereotype because who can say, but if that were to come to fruition, I'm just saying I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't argue with it because, um, I think that Marguerite and Jean will have something going on, something sweet and adorable. And, um, cause she talks enough for both of them cause she loves gossip, but also, like, she gets important information from the gossip. It's so... Okay, it shouldn't have been as cute as it was, but I was like, aww, that's so cute. So, anyway. Um, yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. I um, haven't written a full review on Goodreads yet because I can't decide what to do with it. Like, this wasn't like the, like... This wasn't Sorcery of Thorns for me, but that is clearly a standalone book. And though she is writing a novella, or the novella's coming out in January, I mean, it stands by itself and had for for a while before she decided to write this novella. So this is, there are similar elements, um, kind of. Like, if you read both of them, you'll, you'll be able to see that. Um, but it's clearly not meant to be standalone. And though there are high-tension moments it still feels like the beginning of her story. Um, and so I don't know what to do with that. Um, it didn't like set my soul on fire, but I really enjoyed it. Like the writing was really wonderful and the pacing worked pretty well. Um, like I said in a previous clip too, Margaret Rodgerson does a great job of developing characters on the run, basically. Um, Emily and I were talking about this, but she, she knows how to get you in the story just enough where you feel like you can follow along and then you hit the ground running and you're figuring it out shit with the characters and then as they're figuring it out because you're spending time with them figuring it out you're learning things about them and that's their character development and it, it works really well so um yeah 
That was my first reading vlog. I have no idea if that's how it's supposed to go. I have watched other people's reading vlogs. Who's to say? But um, I hope that that was enjoyable. And I don't know. I hope I hope not too, too spoilery. Um, but at the same time, like gives you a sense of the book. I mean, it definitely goes into more depth than maybe some of the things I plan to say. But at the same time, I think it was vague enough as well. So anyway, that's it. Um, I don't know when I'll do another one, but, um, I'll probably do like one a month. Um, I'm playing around with the idea of doing like, um, like road trip reading vlogs where like, I know I'm going on a road trip soon. And so I like whatever book that I, I'm going to be, that I think I'll be reading when I leave, <laughs> like to go on the road trip that's you know probably at least like three hours there and like and then back um if i'm gonna be alone i'll like do vlogs like before i leave and then i don't know we'll see um it i don't know i don't know i think it'd be kind of fun and i do like to drive so anyway thanks for sticking around bye